Hey, sports managers of the Super Conference. This is your commissioner, Tyler Burkhardt, again. We're at the week four recap show here. Uh, a lot of great, great contests, um, a little controversy, and uh, overall, only one undefeated team remains. So uh, let's get to the teams and see what's happening. First of all, the best manager of the week. Now, in my eyes, there's two people I wanted to put in here, uh, San Fran Frenzy comes in second, but my number one team that I'm going to give is the San Antonio Toros with Tim Coplin. Now, the reason why I'm giving Tim this award is not because he beat me. There's two main reasons why I'm giving Tim this award for the week. First of all, who of us would have thought that Tim Coplin of the San Antonio Toros would be 2-2 two and two after four weeks? I don't know about you, but I thought Tim was for sure going to be an 0-4 team after four weeks, and at the bottom. Instead, he's 2-2, two and two, and there's a slimmer of hope that he could sneak into the playoffs because of a good record and a weaker division. I mean, let's look at his team real quick. Ryan Matthews, who at first we all laughed that he ended up trading for him as one of his keepers, but he's now turning into an all-day back, getting about 20 carries, not to mention he's a great keeper for future years because he's going to get more experience and pick up some speed. Uh, Javid Bess isn't looking bad with the Lions being able to move that offense and giving him more touchdown opportunities. Freeman looked great the, uh, last night against Indianapolis. And Plaxico Burst, I know Jets just struggled offensively. But Burst has been getting a ton of targets, so I think his stock will go up as the year goes on. And he's got Nate Washington with Kenny Britt now out. Nate Washington looks like a great fantasy play. So all of a sudden, San Antonio Toros is starting to look like a very decent team. And for this reason, I think Tim should be recognized for that, so I'm going to make him my manager of the week for week four. The worst, man <laughs> the worst manager of the week... Uh, we'll go to Tyler Burkhardt of the Washington Stimulus. Now, this isn't the worst week that I've ever seen have a manager had, but it was pretty bad. Um, could have won. I could have been 4-0 if I put in Matt Castle in for Mark Sanchez. I thought about it, but to be honest, if I interviewed all 16 of us, I think only one or two of us would have ended up putting in Matt Castle. I don't think it was that much of a given. But Sanchez looked terrible because of his offensive line. Absolutely terrible. Um, so that was one. The whole Steve Slayton incident, which I'm embarrassed that was all put on Facebook and that. That should have been a private conversation between Aaron and I if we thought that was a whole ethical dilemma. Uh, but that was not a bright moment of the week for me. I was a 30-point favorite, not to mention I guaranteed a win against Tim. It was a bad week. Let's just put it out there. It was a bad week for me. I'm still 3-1. and one. Uh, I still put up the second most points in our fantasy league. So I'm not going to all of a sudden panic um, due to this loss. Uh, I still have a great team. Just a, not a great week for me. So I'll give myself that award. Uh, most valuable player. I mean, sure, Aaron Rodgers put up the most points, but that wasn't a close matchup. So I'm going to give it to the Baltimore defense. Truly made the difference in uh, Brian Edmondson's week, putting up over 33 points. And really, that was... Almost a must win just because how tough his conference is. So it gets him back to the 2-2 two and two mark. Really helped him out there. And uh, upcoming week, he now plays San Fran and Frenzy. So makes it even that much more important to win. Uh, the best matchup, as I predicted, Cleveland versus San Fran. Awesome, awesome matchup. Ended up that these are the two highest scoring teams. So only in this situation... When the loser ends up putting the second most fantasy points of the week, do I feel bad for the loser? So in this case, Evan, I do feel ba I do feel bad for you. I really do, especially losing by point two points. Uh, but a great matchup, Beanie Wells looking pretty decent for San Fran Frenzy. But I still mark my words, he is injury prone, and we will see Beanie Wells go down in a few weeks. I'm still live to my words. But it was a great matchup, and I think we all had fun uh, watching that Sunday night. So week four, biggest upset. Uh, for this one, I'll go the L.A. Seismic Quakes over New York Blackout. Uh, similar to when San Antonio's got his first win, 
Uh, nobody predicted LA Seismic Quakes to win in this case either, not even himself, and he still pulled out the victory. Uh, almost a must-win situation that was for the LA Seismic Quakes as well. And huge momentum shift with these two teams because LA, while they needed the win to keep track, two behind of Seattle now, New York Blackout has given up the lead, and now they're tied for second in a very, very busy and competitive NFC East. So it's very interesting to see these two teams shift momentums after this game. Uh, and, I mean, not only did LA win, they scored over 100 points. So it was a well-deserved win as well. So for these reasons, I will go with the LA Seismic Quakes as the greatest upset of Week 4. So let's go to the Super Conference Rankings. Uh, as I posted earlier on Facebook, 12 out of the 16 teams in our league are 2-2. Two and two. I mean, this is why I love the 16-team league, because this happened last year, too. We might have thought that a lot of teams were a lot better than some others, but to be honest with you, because of the lack of, um, of depth in that, I mean, it's really even until the end. So only four teams are below it, and to be honest with you, I mean, some of those teams are still in contention just because of how weak their divisions are. So, I mean, there's still in it. So, actually, I could see 15 of the 16 teams getting in. Fargo and Bargo is going to need a little run, um, but it's not, uh, it's not impossible for him to do. Um, so, it'll be really exciting to see what happened. The only huge move I think I made was I moved New York Blackout down three spots to the eighth spot. Uh, just because in the last two weeks I haven't seen much, especially out of his running back product, uh, out of his running backs uh, producing, especially a die. I'm starting to question now. So I this is starting to become kind of a must-win week, I think, for blackout. Um, otherwise, I mean, both Legend and Toros moved up with their wins, but really not much else has changed uh, with the pre or with the rankings this week. So let's jump to uh, week five. Game of the week, Washington Stimulus versus Seattle Sasquatches. Both teams are 3-1, and one, uh, both ranked in the top three of my rankings. Uh, not to mention, Kyle and I have a rivalry, always in fantasy sports, I feel like. So uh, I think we're going to both have fun this week. Uh, one might have a two-game lead after this week, while the other could be tied for the lead. So a critical week for both of us, especially as we're looking onto the playoffs, will be an exciting uh, event. And if you just saw, I just traded Cedric Benson uh, for Macklin, um, uh, Jonathan Stewart, and Matt Hasselbeck to even help out with these upcoming weeks here, especially because Benson will probably be suspended. So uh, it'll be interesting for me to use those new players in this matchup. Upset alert, Fargo and Bargo, will call it, will get his first win this week. Uh, I've been pretty good with my upset uh, specials lately, and I think this is going to happen to the Lions for Kiln Legend, you know, the Stafford and Kelvin Johnson combo. They go against the Bears, uh, and I see the Bears really making a statement next week. Meanwhile, also Frank Gore goes against Tampa Bay. That's not going to work out well. And meanwhile, Fargo and Bargo has the Giants players, meaning like Hakeem Nix and Bradshaw against the Seahawks. And Sproles against Carolina, he could go off again there. So Fargo and Bargo, I will call, will get his first win and not kill Legend down to 2-3. and three. Uh, Finally, the Week 4 prediction winner was Seattle getting 6 of the 8 games right. So Kyle Armstrong will pick up 10 FAB dollars. I will also mention if Nate Burkhart uh, with the LA Seismic Quakes... If he would have predicted himself, he would have tied. <laughs> so that's why you should always have confidence in yourself. So uh, finally, make sure to fill out uh, contenders or pretenders. I'll feature four more teams this week. So check those out. And otherwise, best of luck to everybody. Week five, as we enter the bye weeks now, will get really interesting. This is your commissioner, Tyler Burkhart. Game on.